I'm Angie Kantz, and this is part three of Deep Dive into the Character Evolution of Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead for Post Show Recaps. Today I'm going to be talking about Daryl getting fully entrenched into his prison Daryl identity, as well as his relationship with Carol. Once again, I'm going to be referencing many points in different seasons, so this is your spoiler alert. So now that Prison Daryl is fully formed, all he needs is a prison. Ah, there it is. Do you know what I wasn't expecting? Prison Daryl wears a poncho. Giddy up. Prison Daryl is steady, strong, and dependable. He works well with others. He feeds babies and blows up tanks. He's fine working within a dictatorship or a democracy. Prison Daryl is all good. By season four, Daryl is a bona fide celebrity. No wonder he has his own action figure. With his button-up shirt and nerd glasses, Patrick is like a bite-sized version of Dale. In the old world, Patrick would have a one-way ticket to Harvard, but in this world, he's useless, and he's an awe of Survivor Daryl. So that's just about the grossest thing you could do before shaking someone's hand. But look at baby Dale! He can't get enough! No wonder he got sick and died. Boy, intellectuals sure are the red shirts of the new world. In fact, Daryl's character is so transformed at this point, the only thing about him that hasn't changed is that red rag that's managed to stay stuffed into the ass of his pants throughout an entire zombie apocalypse. But he hasn't left Wild Thing Daryl behind forever. Norman Reedus uses his voice to express which Daryl Dixon persona we're dealing with. Wild Thing Daryl or Prison Daryl? Here's the difference. And you left him there? Mm. And here I am taking a pen. No, no way. You wanna hold on to your teeth? No him, no me. Stupid bitch. It was Michonne's. Like everything was a big game. Your family too. So it's clear at this point that Prison Daryl is pretty badass. But let's take some time to see how he got to this point. The amazing opening scene for season three shows the group working together in complete unison. The entire scene has no dialogue at all, as if they are a flock of birds or a herd of prey moving as a single unit. When clearing the prison, it's clear that Daryl is Rick's lieutenant. Light it up! Daryl has the other set of keys. Not Herschel, not Glenn, not Maggie. I'll take the perch. And when Tomas makes himself known as a psychotic killer, Rick and Daryl are on exactly the same page in about an instant. You see the look on his face? He makes one move. Just give me a signal. The Killer Within is a critical episode in Season 3. The theme of this episode is looking beyond appearances to who people are within. At the prison, before deciding what to do with the remaining prisoners, Rick looks to Daryl. Daryl can relate to these guys. That doesn't mean that he sides with them. I get guys like this. Hell, I grew up with them. They're degenerates, but they ain't psychos. I could have been in there with them just as easy as I'm out here with you guys. So are you with me? Hell no. Let them take their chances out on the road, just like we did. He is not that guy anymore. He's the second in command. The Walking Dead uses the symbol of a deer to represent the innocence of the old world. In Daryl's first episode, the deer he was tracking to offer the group is fouled by walkers. Even his gritty old world behaviors are not safe from walkers. Next, Carl has a beautiful moment of connection with the deer while looking for Sophia. They lock eyes, both pure and unspoiled, kindred spirits and a world gone mad. They are both cut to the ground by a single bullet. Such innocence can't exist in this world, and we see Carl completely transform on the farm from an optimistic young boy to a hardened young man. In season four's The Grove, we see Carol and Tyrese living in a dreamlike fantasy on a pecan farm with Lizzie and Mika. They are living in illusion on this farm and it's only a matter of time before the illusion is shattered. Their whole storyline is very clearly referencing of Mice and Men, where George and Lenny are dreaming of living on a farm one day. This dream is shattered when the simple-minded Lenny accidentally kills a woman. George knows that Lenny can't be around people, and that he'll die at the hands of a lynch mob. George tells him to look at the river while he puts a bullet in the back of his head. On their dream farm, Carol and Tyrese see a deer. This represents the illusion of happiness and family being attainable in the new world. 
And finally, in this episode in Season 3, when we lose Lori, Andrew the prisoner uses parts of a slaughtered deer to lure walkers into the prison to destroy the group. It is no accident that we see him place the heart of a deer to be devoured by walkers in the same episode as we see Carl shoot his own mother. The heart of innocence dies with Lori. So what does this have to do with Daryl? We see in this episode a connection being made between Carl's act and Daryl's past. Unlike Carl, Daryl's innocence was killed long ago. The old world did that for him, which is why he functions so well now. Through Carl, we can see Daryl's own hardening as a child. Daryl tells Carl how his mom burned herself alive while drunk. Yeah, she's just gone. Erased. This is exactly what he says about Beth later. Merle left the rooftop. Carol, too, has disappeared on him. The people he loves keeps getting erased from his life. Daryl finds Carol's knife, and he sits in the prison, preparing himself to find her dead, or worse, a walker. You can see the emotion here, but what is it, and where did it come from? The character struggles and development of Carol and Daryl are connected right from Daryl's first episode. There's a clear juxtaposition between Carol's relationship with Ed and Daryl's relationship with Merle. In Daryl's first episode, we see the scene of Ed punching Carol in the face and being beaten by Shane. Carol runs to Ed's side, apologizing, like it was her fault Ed got beaten. This has a cyclical feel to it, like Carol and Ed have done this dance many times. The scene cuts directly to Daryl rushing onto the rooftop looking for Merle. Daryl learns that Merle didn't wait and cut off his own hand to escape the rooftop. He too feels somehow responsible for this, despite the fact that he did not let his brother down. This lays some groundwork for us. These two scenes side by side tell us that Daryl's relationship with Merle is likely abusive as well. The juxtaposition happens again in season four when Daryl chooses Merle over the group. I mean, like Merle get into your head. Make you feel like you deserve the abuse. This is a consistent device used in the series. Carol's dialogue informs what's happening with Daryl and vice versa. We see this device again in season five's Consumed. Daryl appears to be behaving out of character in his reaction to Noah, but when the scenes keep cutting back to flashbacks of Carol freeing the group from Terminus, we realize that his actions are being used to narrate the mental struggle going on with Carol. So back to their first connection in season one. After the attack on the camp, Daryl is making sure that none of the dead turn. And when he gets to Ed, Carol reaches for the axe. Carol's anger, pain, and suffering under his hand all come through as she strikes at him again and again. Here, she's finally able to strike back at Ed for all the victimization she endured from him. She's crying for what he did and what she lost. In season three, when Daryl discovers that Merle has turned into a walker, he has a very similar reaction to his abusive brother. He pushes him away like a little kid being bullied by an older brother. He cries. Then he stabs Merle in the face again and again, devastated that Merle has abandoned him yet again and angry that he was never the brother Daryl needed him to be. The connection between Carol's relationship to Ed and Daryl's relationship to Merle is the foundation of their bond to each other. They come from a similar background and are fighting similar demons. This is why it's Carol who most consistently shows affection to Daryl. She understands him, where he comes from, and what he needs. She sees him for who he is and what he's capable of. Carol's consistent faith and belief in Daryl is fundamental in convincing the group of his worth. You don't need to worry. She's with Daryl. If something happens, he can protect her. He gives Carol the Cherokee Rose, the only expression of love he has offered the group at this point. Carol feels safe with Daryl. She sees his strength and his heart. Like her, she knows the only thing his life is missing is love. She knows that expressions of affection scare Daryl, but she can't let him believe that he's alone. Can't lose you too. Carol represents unconditional love. This is why he is so hurt when she gives up on looking for Sophia. If her love has limits, does that mean that Daryl can trust it? 
I'm not going to let you pull away. You've earned your place. Perhaps because of her relationship with abusive men, Carol doesn't falter when Daryl lashes out at her. After the loss of Sophia, she stands before him, an unmovable force. She's telling him that he has no choice. He is stuck with her, no matter how much he yells, no matter how much he tries to hurt her. The first night in the prison, they are hanging back from the group. Their connection is undeniable. They both feel like outsiders. The song Beth and Maggie are singing is Parting Glass, a traditional Irish folk song about parting ways, often sung before leaving for war. It's about reflecting on a life well lived, of saying goodbye to friends, family and lovers, and accepting your fate, no matter what it is, with grace. So here Daryl sits outside the locker, preparing himself to face the fact that Carol is dead. He stabs the ground with Carol's own knife, like a little kid kicking the dirt. He is summoning up the courage to face something ugly. He paces again, the trapped animal ready to fight its way out of a corner. When he finds her, he is awash in relief. Finally, he gets to keep something that he loves. So I hope you like the deep dive into the character evolution of Daryl Dixon. Be sure to watch part four where I talk about his relationship with Merle, the code he needs to live by, and the relevance of the novel Tom Sawyer. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter, and be sure to let me know your questions and comments. Until next time, don't look back.